please welcome Blair Imani. She's a writer, mental health advocate, and historian living at the intersections of black, queer, and Muslim identity. She is the official ambassador of Muslims for Progressive Values, one of the oldest progressive Muslim organizations to support the LGBTQI plus community, Blair Imani. Oh my goodness, my 15 year old self is shook. I'm following Betty, oh my God. All right, y'all. Say this chant with me, you saw it in the video. We are natural history. We are natural history. Thank you so much, y'all. They want to tell us that we have no history. But guess what? We know we have history. And we know that just like the rainbow that represents us, that represents transgender, intersex, lesbian, gay, bisexual, asexual, and queer people. Just like the rainbow, we are beautiful and naturally occurring. We are natural history. In history books, from elementary school to college textbooks, they want to tell us that black history, Latinx history, indigenous history, and queer history are mutually exclusive. We know that not to be the case. When we learned about the 1963 March on Washington, we learned about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we learned about John Lewis, we learned about A. Philip Ray, but we do not learn about Bayard Rustin, the architect of that march, who was an out black gay man in 1963 and in decades before. He organized for LGBTQ liberation and for black liberation. But they don't want to tell us this. It's intentional. Because if communities are pitted against each other by erasing those who exist at those crucial intersections, we will be too busy pushing each other away than squatting up and fighting for liberation, which is what we're here to do today. When the Stonewall riots happened in 1969, it was a direct response to years of police violence, harassment, and intimidation suffered by people like Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson. Violence that extinguished the life of Leilene Polanco Extravaganza, very recently in Rikers. There is no pride so long as Rikers is open. Sylvia Rivera had been homeless since she was 10 years old. Today, 40% of, uh, of homeless youth identify as LGBT. There is no pride so long as there are homeless youth. <laughs> Sylvia Rivera lived on the streets of Times Square and worked as a sex worker to survive. When the NYPD stormed into the Stonewall Inn, it was not a rare occurrence. The New York City Police Department frequently harassed and intimidated gay patrons at various bars, and this happened just yesterday, y'all. During Stonewall, they were able to do this because many of the people who attended those bars were not concerned with disrupting the status quo. They were happy to go along to get along so long as they could remain closeted and live their lives. Back then, it was called the homophile movement. And it was not about liberation. It was about fitting into a straight, cisgender, white box and saying, I'm just like you, except I'm gay. That didn't get us very far. During that time, the American Psychological Association had listed homosexuality as a mental illness, something that we know to not be the case. The night that Sylvia Rivera was at the Stonewall Inn, it was not even her normal place of hanging out. It was a drag night. She was passing enough to enter those doors. People who were gender non-conforming were not historically welcomed into those spaces. The other side of town, Marsha P. Johnson was celebrating her birthday. But when shit popped up, Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson squatted up for liberation like we we're meant to do. When the police stormed in, the bar would, the, when the police stormed in the bar, they asked bartenders to open the tills and to give them their money because they knew they could get away with harassment. And Sylvia Rivera, having years of gone through this type of harassment, said, okay, take the money. And they threw fistfuls of quarters at the police. And that escalated. It went from throwing quarters at the police to throwing bricks at the police. And during some time at this point, either one of the bar patrons or one of the police lit that bar on fire. Now, we don't know which happened, but you know how the police do, so make up your own minds. 
The streets erupted into protests, and Marsha came from celebrating her birthday to join in the eruption. Stonewall lasted several days, and what's crucial for y'all to know, as I give my largest history lecture ever, <laughs> is that it fundamentally changed the trajectory of the LGBTQ rights movement. It turned it from the homophile movement to the gay liberation movement, to the gay and lesbian liberation movement, to the LGBT liberation movement, to the queer liberation movement. And that is why the queer, the queer Reclaim Pride March is so crucial because we are part of history today. So you might be asking yourself, what am I doing for queer liberation? And that's something we should reflect on today and every day. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm educating people about the history of our foremothers. I'm being an out, proud, black, queer, Muslim woman. I'm working alongside Muslims for Progressive Values to codify change not only in the United States, but in repressive governments across the world that stone gay people for being themselves, that incarcerate gay people from being themselves, that force sex changes on intersex youth in what is called genital mutilation surgery. That happens here in the United States. I can't change the world alone. None of us can. And so I want you to pull out your phone. I'm serious. If it's still, if it's still working. I know a lot of us got dead phones. And no, I'm not asking for donations, but you can hit me up backstage if you want to. I want you to text the word UNITY, U-N-I-T-Y, to 52886, because I want you to sign up to take the Muslims for Progressive Values No Hate in My Faith pledge. And you ain't even got to be Muslim to do it. You can convert right now if you want, though. No pressure. <laughs> I'm working with them as part of my larger mission of telling queer people of faith, any faith, that you are not a sinner. You are not flawed. You are not a problem. You are perfect because God does not make mistakes, and you are not a mistake. Again, you can join me by texting UNITY to 52886. And I want to wish all of you love, always, and in all ways. Thank you so much for being here.